Hi, this is Dr. Graves from the Geography Department at Cal State Northridge, and this is a short video tutorial um, about Earth-Sun relationships with a focus on how to calculate elevation angle, solar declination, and uh, various other sun angles. It's one of the uh, major learning objectives in several labs um, regarding how to use an analemma and how to understand how sun angle impacts weather and climate and solar insulation. So uh, we've found that some students have trouble reading formulas, which is the point of the lab. Uh, we think that being able to read an equation and plug in figures to it is an important skill that is, uh, goes far beyond um, geography. So uh, we made this little video here to help you uh, interpret these uh, figures and formulas and how you can plug them in. In order to do this, I have uh, constructed a little Microsoft Excel file. Here it is. And we have a couple of sample problems that you can um, use or watch as I work through them. So the first question is, um, what is the zenith angle and the elevation angle uh, in Seattle on May 1st? So there's a couple of things you have to do first. The first um, thing is to find the latitude or the solar declination uh, during this particular date. So for May 1st, what I want to do is come over to the analemma, which allows us to look up a solar declination. I have a little brown bar here that can help me uh, see what I'm looking at more clearly. And here's May up here. And so May 1st is about right here. So I can zoom in. It's May, April, May, and there's April 30th. So we're going to push that up to May 1st. And the solar declination is being reported as 15 degrees. So we're going to come up back over here and type in 15 for the solar declination. And in order to find the latitude, I just went to Google Earth and looked for it right there. And I know that uh, Seattle has about 46 degrees north latitude. So I've put those two in to my formula. And here is the formula as I'm going to use it. But this is from your online textbook. Um, the zenith angle is equal to the absolute value of latitude minus solar declination. In Excel, you would type that same formula in as equals absolute value and y, which is what we see here, latitude minus solar declination, which is the ds figure and we put a close parenthesis in there, and we see that the zenith angle is 31 degrees. To find the elevation angle, it's even more simple. It equals 90 degrees minus 31, or the zenith angle, and we see this um, formula there. So there's the elevation angle at 59, and the zenith angle at 31. You know those are called complementary angles. Now, let's consider the sun angle for Santiago, Chile, which is in the southern hemisphere. In the southern hemisphere, the sun is going to be lower on the horizon during May because our bar is up here north of the equator on our analemma. It's, our, it's approaching our summertime, but it is uh, heading into the winter in the southern hemisphere. So because Santiago is in a different hemisphere than the solar declination, we have to use a slightly different formula to calculate the zenith angle. The solar declination, because the date remains the same, May 1st, remains at 15. But the latitude for 
Santiago, Chile is certainly not 46 degrees north. Rather, it's 33.4 south. So I'm going to type in 33.4 here, and that's the latitude for Santiago, Santiago Chile. Because the solar declination is in the northern hemisphere and Santiago, Chile is in the southern hemisphere, we use the different hemisphere formula for zenith angle, and that is equals y, which is the latitude once again, now plus the solar declination. And we now have a zenith angle of 48.4, and this elevation angle formula remains the same. It's just 90 minus the zenith angle to get a solar declination of 41. This tells us that the sun angle is more intense in Seattle in May 1st than it is in Santiago. It should be, um, with all other things held equal, a little warmer in Seattle than Santiago at this time. Okay, so let's erase this. These, uh, at least these two elements and these two elements, and let's take a look at February 20th, which is our winter in Nairobi, Kenya. Now, Nairobi is just below the equator at a angle, at a latitude of 1.3 south, but because it's February 20th, when we look at this analemma, and we zoom in here, February 20th, I'm grabbing my little marker bar and I'm going to move it down. There's February 20th. This marker bar, this reference bar, is below the equator. So that's our winter and Nairobi. It's closer to their summer in the southern hemisphere. And we have a solar declination of around 11 degrees. So we're going to come back over here and put in solar declination 11 degrees. Same hemisphere? Yes. Therefore, the zenith angle shows up at 9.7 degrees. If I press F2, you can see, again, absolute difference between latitude and solar declination. And then uh, if we press here, we can see 90 minus 9.7, which tells you that the sun angle, the elevation angle, is 80.3, which at noontime is really close to being overhead, and that indicates that in Nairobi, Kenya on February 20th, that's probably a pretty hot day. So let's take a look at St. Petersburg during January 15th. St. Petersburg is in Russia. January 15th is the winter for the Northern Hemisphere, definitely. So let's look up the solar declination for January 15th. Come over here and we can drag this bar down to January 15th. That's right there. So the solar declination is at 22 degrees. That's a pretty big solar declination, 22. And we'll have to look up the latitude for St. Petersburg. And we see that the latitude is 60 degrees. If I press F2, we can see the formula for zenith angle, which is, again, uh, latitude plus solar declination. And we get a, a, a zenith angle of 82, and subtract 82 from 90, and you get an elevation angle of only 8 degrees, which is pretty low, so at noon, on January 15th, the sun is only 8 degrees above horizon, which means that the sun angle is very low and it's going to be really quite cold, especially in comparison to Nairobi, Kenya at that time. Hopefully this has helped you uh, learn how to read the analemma and how to plug in 
uh, values in uh, from the formulas so that you can calculate these simple angles. This is the end of this video tutorial.